And I'd like to tell you a little bit about the gut skin connection and how we can use a stool test like the GI map to give us insight into how gut health may be impacting the health of the skin. We know that the skin is a reflection of the gut, so we want to evaluate the health of the gut whenever there is a skin condition. The gut microbiome appears to play a key role in the development of many inflammatory skin disorders, and the presence and overgrowth of certain organisms in the gut have also been implicated in autoimmune skin diseases. Stool testing can be used to identify dysfunction in the gut that may be contributing to skin conditions. The GI MAP test from Diagnostic Solutions Laboratory uses qPCR technology to measure pathogens, commensals, opportunistic bacteria, protozoa, fungi, viruses, and worms. It also evaluates digestive function immune responses, and intestinal barrier integrity. There are numerous gut issues associated with skin conditions. This includes gut pathogens, insufficient beneficial flora, overgrowth of opportunistic organisms such as bacteria and yeast, poor digestion, inflammation, leaky gut, and gluten sensitivity. So here are a few things I'm looking for on the report that I might connect with the skin condition. So when we have gut pathogens, a couple I'm really focusing on are H. pylori and blastocystis hominis. H. pylori is a bacteria that lives in the stomach. In the literature, this has been connected with rosacea, psoriasis, chronic urticaria, chronic perigo, and atopic dermatitis. Blastocystis hominis is a parasite that lives in the colon. This parasite has been linked with urticaria, both acute and chronic, psoriasis, cutaneous lesions, and palmoplantar pruritus. Insufficient be beneficial flora can also be associated with skin conditions. So say there's low lactobacillus or bifidobacterium species. That's been linked with acne and atopic dermatitis. Low acromancy mucinophila has been linked with psoriasis. Low Fecalobacterium presnitzii, a major butyrate producing species, has been linked with psoriasis and atopic dermatitis. Sometimes it's bacterial overgrowth that's a problem. So there may be high Staphylococcus aureus. That's been linked with atopic dermatitis, eczema, impetigo, boils, and cellulitis. There's also numerous bacterial species that can produce histamine. When there's an excess of histamine, there may be urticaria, pruritus, rosacea, psoriasis, or eczema. Here are some of the species that are measured on the GI map that are known to be histamine producing species. There's Enterococcus species, Escherichia species, which is E. coli, Morganella morganae, Enterobacter species, Citrobacter species, Klebsiella species, and Proteus species. So those are some of the top organisms I'm looking for as I look through the report and I'm working with a client with skin issues. Now, if you'd like to learn more about the GI map test and how you can start implementing it in your practice, you can contact us at diagnosticsolutionslab.com. The GI map using quantitative PCR or qPCR testing gives doctors what they need to know. You know, I was with Diagnostic Solutions Lab from the beginning when we first conceived of and developed the GI map test. And we were really trying to develop a tool for integrative and functional medicine physicians to be able to better diagnose their patients and better ascertain how changes in the intestinal health and the gut ecology, as we call it, may help them better guide their treatment options for patients with complex chronic diseases. The GI MAP test uses qPCR, and that is really the kind of method that doctors are looking for to make a decision. We're able to really very specifically check not only what's in the gut, but how much of an organism is in the gut. And that's really critical for doctors to make clinical decisions.